I would buy extra clothes and buy things that I really didn't need just because I wanted to. But when I got married, I realized like, oh man, there's no, there's no hiding. There's accountability. So I had to stop cheating on my budget. But honestly, I would fight about it. But then when my husband wanted to cheat, I kind of felt like, man, like that's not fair. <laughs> If you're watching this video, you want to be a wife one day. Maybe you're engaged right now, or maybe you hope to be engaged in the future. But either way, a wife is made in how she thinks, not in the ring that she wears. My name is Pauline, and I am a first-time mom, and I became a wife in 2018. Now, by no means am I an expert on being a wife or marriage or anything like that, but I do want to share some of the major transitions that I faced as a new wife in hopes that it helps you transition really well. Marriage is a huge, huge life change. It's what a, lo a lot of us women dream about since we were little girls. But honestly, if we think about it, most of the time we dream about the wedding more than we do the marriage. And one of the reasons why I believe the divorce rate is so high in the US is because we really aren't prepared to be a wife. We're not prepared to go into marriage wholeheartedly with the healthiest mindsets. So I want to share three things that I stopped doing when I became a wife. The first thing I stopped doing when I became a wife was jam packing my weekends. It is so tempting to say yes to every single invitation that you get, especially if you're like me and you're extroverted and honestly, you just have really fun friends. It's so fun to go to every brunch, every birthday party, every dinner. It's so tempting to go to all these different events. Sometimes even the opening of an envelope looks fun. But when you become a wife, your priorities completely shift. Sometimes you are able to have a very active weekend. And trust me, me and my husband both have great friends. We love hanging out with our friends and our family and celebrating them. But we had to learn how to transition and how to prioritize our home first. One of the big pieces of the weekend is preparing for the week. And when you both work full-time jobs, have to get up early Monday morning, the best Monday mornings start Sunday night. Now I know you know this because you're an adult <laughs> and you know what it's like to stay up all night and not prepare your lunch and not set out your clothes and not set yourself up for success. But it's an even bigger transition when you are responsible for another person. Now that doesn't mean that, you know, your husband is not able to get himself up in the morning or lay out his own clothes or anything like that, but you're now operating as a team. If it's my job to grocery shop, for us for that week and I'm supposed to do it Sunday but I decided to go out and hang out with friends or go to a dinner um, instead that means that Monday is going to be not only hard for me but for him as well so one of the things that I had to shift was not jam packing my weekends we've actually transitioned to only one day a weekend with friends and family outside of our regular Friday date nights now I know that that's really really hard and sometimes it's like oh well I can't control when people have their events or when things are planned and it's absolutely a sacrifice and I'm not saying that you just say no to every single thing but sometimes it means okay if Sunday is our night to meal plan and to cook and to grocery shop but we have an event or a wedding we want to go to on Sunday sometimes that means doing it on Saturday night or sometimes that means hey I'm gonna go on Monday night and then for Monday for lunch can you if you have leftovers or whatever the case is but I used to jam pack my weekends all the time before I got married because it was only me I had to worry about. If I didn't meal prep for that weekend or go grocery shopping that weekend, it didn't really bother anybody else besides me because I was only responsible for myself. But that's a big transition and something to over communicate when you do get married. The second thing I stopped doing when I got married was wearing ratty PJs to bed. Now ladies, I know that all of us like to look our best when we are out in public, we get our hair done, our nails done, we always make sure we look fresh and clean, especially before we get in a relationship or before we get married because we're trying to attract the opposite sex. But sometimes when we get married, we let ourselves go. And that's honestly one of the biggest fears that a lot of guys have when they get married. It's like, oh man, what is she going to look like behind closed doors? And the first couple of weeks of marriage, guys, sometimes their eyes are really... <laughs> They're really opened. And I didn't want my husband to have that experience. Now don't get me wrong, I don't go to sleep with makeup on. I don't even wear makeup every day. Um, but my, my husband does see me with my bonnet on and all those different things. But I also wanted to not just give my best in public. And I want him, of course, and I know that you 
probably feel the same way that you want your husband to be proud of you and you're taking his last name you're representing him you're his crown all of those wonderful beautiful things but I wanted to make sure that that was still represented on a scalable and realistic level at home as well. So I threw away my old uh, flannel, holy PJs and got some cute PJs. You know, that can look different for everybody, but and sometimes it just means getting flannel PJs that don't have holes in them. But really what my standard became was what does my husband think is cute? What does my husband think is appropriate? And I'm not talking about wearing lace PJs and like silk pajamas every single night, but it does mean looking presentable and kind of giving your best at all times not because you're trying to impress your husband but because you honor him and respect him and love him the same way that I wouldn't want him to wear holy underwear and things like that around the house because it's just me I want him to look his best for me more than he does for people out there that he's not committed to for his whole life <laughs> the third thing that I stopped doing when I became a wife was cheating on my budget dink was nice but it came at a price. <laughs> now, I was so disciplined with my budget before I got married. I was serious about getting out of debt. I was serious about putting a name to every dollar and knowing where all my money was going. And I was really good about that stuff. Starting my budget before uh, the month began and sending my groceries, all those different things. But as you all know, life happens and things come up, things need to be adjusted, and there's nothing wrong with adjusting the budget. But a lot of times I would make adjustments that just really didn't need to be made, <laughs> and I would sacrifice other important things in order to get what I wanted. And, you know, I'm not talking about completely forsaking, you know, the, the area of my budget that's for debt or whatever the case is, but a lot of times I would buy shoes, and I would buy extra clothes, and buy things that I really didn't need just because I wanted to. But when I got married, I realized, like, Oh man, there's no, there's no hiding. There's accountability. Um, you know, I can't just buy and do whatever I want without someone bringing it up. It was much easier to hide when I was a single. So I had to stop cheating on my budget. But honestly, I would fight about it. But then when my husband wanted to cheat, I kind of felt like, man, like that's not fair. But how much more so for him? If, if I wasn't going to play by the rules, then why couldn't he play by the rules either? And I just realized how much we were a team and how much like, man, what I do affects somebody else and affects our whole family and our future family as much too so there was no extra shoe buying there was no extra clothes buying I mean if I went over my budget for the month my personal budget to go out to dinner or things with friends I had to just kind of make it work I didn't really deny myself any of those those kind of benefits or pleasantries before I got married. Um, so it took my discipline, my financial discipline to a whole nother level. <laughs> if you like this video, check out the other videos in the first year of marriage series. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.